October um, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee meeting. Thank you all for being here. Um, we will start with, oh, uh, will you please do roll call, please? Sure. Lee? Present. Sabula? Present. Lira? Johnson? Hayes? Present. Eagle? Hesse? Present. Wenzel Berger? Present. Yang? Present. Benayag? Okay, we have six. Okay. Committee member Lakeisha will be reading the land acknowledgement for us. We are gathered here on the lands that were originally home to the Menominee and Ho-Chunk nations. We honor the Menominee and Ho-Chunk Ho communities and are grateful for their stewardship of the land and waters. We acknowledge these ancestral grounds as sacred and remember the complex history of settler colonialism on these lands and the effects that persist today. We commit to a restorative and healing relationship of the original inhabitants and our community. Thank you, Lakeisha. Sophia will be reading our mission statement. The mission of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, DEI, committee is to create a more welcoming, connected, and equitable Oshkosh by consciously including the, rich the richness and complexities of marginalized voices in its planning and function. Thank you, Sophia. Um, next, we have introductions of our new member, but I see that he's not present. No, um, there there was a new person um, that has been appointed. However, we haven't been able to make contact yet. So, okay. All right. Um, next, we will approve the minutes from the September 26th meeting. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the September meeting? Move to approve. A second. Any discussion, question, comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Thank you. All right. Moving right along here. Oh. Okay. Um, did we have any citizens or community members uh, submit requests to make any comments? Nope, no, um, no citizen statements or public comments um, have been requested. Okay. Um, next, we will have our guest, um, Kelly. Um, she is a program. Well, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me today. Uh, my name is Kelly Nyforth. I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Oshkosh. Um, so I'm here today to talk about some of the housing programs that we have in the city for our residents within the city boundaries. Um, the city has done quite a bit for housing in the past. Um, we used to partner with the Oshkosh Housing Authority. Um, but I believe in the early 2000s, they actually broke away into their own entity. So at that point, the city really took a look to, you know, look to see what our needs were for housing. How could we support the growth of it? Um, obviously, you know, try to rehab existing and help people, you know, find housing. So our first tool we really used was our uh, community development block grant. It's an annual allocation that the city receives from the uh, department um, uh, from HUD. It's a federal agency. And we, since we're an entitlement community, we receive the funds every year and we could use it for housing or anything else in low to moderate income areas. So really that was kind of our first um, you know, um, venture into housing and what we could do to support it. So with that, uh, we really used those funds to help with rehab. Um, we used helps if people had like emergency needs on their homes, like if their water heater went out or there's maybe a, a hole in their roof or something like that, and um, help with down payment assistance and that sort of thing. And through our CDBG program, those, all those different programs were um, if you were low to moderate income. So really that's been really kind of the key um, factor in all of our programs has been if, you know, if you're low to moderate income, we have these other resources for you. 
Since then, though, we did notice that not everybody fits into that low to moderate income um, you know, box, you know, obviously, you know, we want people to, if they're able to get jobs and get a higher income, um, you know, we want them, um, sometimes you're still struggling though, but you might not fit into the low to moderate income qualification. So um, the city was definitely one of the leaders in the state when there is a new state statute saying that we could use some of our TIF money that we have in our dif dis uh, different tax incremental districts in the city. Um, and we use those funds to do um, to help with affordable housing. So it's kind of nice because we have a lot of the same programs, which I'll talk about in a couple minutes here. Um, but we, we, we talk with the person to really understand what their needs are. And we try to see, okay, how can we help you? What are your needs? Kind of what, you know, what are you capable of paying back? And we really try to, you know, figure out what's going to work best in, with them and for their, um, you know, their finances. So then we, that kind of helps us decide which path we're going to steer them down on as far as, you know, which housing program, you know, we'll, we'll look at for them. So it's been really helpful just to kind of have different pots of money to use. Um, the money that we have um, that we get from our TIF, um, our tax incremental districts, when we keep them open that additional year, it's um, a lot less uh, restrictions than the federal funding, of course. As we all know, the federal funding sometimes is challenging. Um, but it, it gives us the ability to be a little creative and flexible. Um, it gives us a little bit more um, um, ways we can react. If we see a need, we can kind of pivot right away. So it's been really, really great. And um, we're continuing to try to um, maximize those dollars and use them to the po fullest potential to really make a profound impact. So um, some of the programs I did want to talk about um, and if anybody has any questions, please feel free just to jump in here. Um, we have, like I said, quite a few for if you are an owner or a rental occupied, um, you know, home to, to help rehab it. Um, we actually have great stock of housing here in the city. Um, I've heard from many people that the houses we have in our central city are actually really well built. Uh, that's because of our strong um, wood manufacturing history that we have here. And the homes that we have in the city are actually, they said, a lot more well built than any some other communities right in our area. So we want to try to keep those homes because it's great to have those homes in our central city and um, they have great bones and sometimes they just need some of those updates that um, you know, we want to have um, programs for so people can do them. So we have different programs if you're a renter or you're a landlord and maybe you want to do some work on your home or else if you do own it. Um, we also have um, down payment assistance programs. Uh, we have a down payment assistance program within our community development block grant fund. Uh, we have it in our healthy neighborhood fund. And then we actually went for a grant to the, from the Wisconsin Department of Administration for another uh, program, the Housing Cost Reduction in this Initiative. So we try to look for just different ways. Um, we're, our department is not afraid of applying for grants uh, to try to look for you know, different funds of money that can help people in different ways. Just out of curiosity, Kelly, can those that program be accessed by people of all different income levels? Yeah, so um, we do have guidelines, obviously, with the federal funds, with the CDBG yep. funding, that they're pretty strict with the, the income levels on that. Um, but for the funds we have um, from our TIF funds, we do have some guidelines on it. It's a little bit higher, but we want to make sure that the funds are being used by people who truly need those funds. Um, and so, you know, we, we do have some guidelines in that. Um, and, we, and we try to follow them too, because it's important to, to make sure the, the funding is getting out there to people who truly need it. So I, I have a follow up, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me to that. So, hello Kelly. Hi. Um, just in general, given all of the different funding sources and reporting you're going to need to do, how would we get a glance and do you have the ability to produce a, a report on essentially what are the programs, what are the funding sources and what are the outcomes, so to speak? Like who, what are your targets? What's, you know, just, just a general picture of, of, of what you, what's going on. Is it available now or is that um. something... I don't have it okay. in one single document, <laughs> yeah. um, but obviously we have some of the KPIs that we have uh, for DEI. We did identify, I think you guys 
well, came up with some ideas for our, our programs. Um, and then certainly um, something else I was going to jump to is we do um, different um, sessions throughout the year, sometimes lunch and learns. Uh, we do them for neighborhoods. We do them um, for different folks where it has all of our programs in one spot. And maybe Michelle is a follow-up. I'll send the link for the YouTube video. Oshkosh Media was nice enough to tape us. Um, so I can send that link, but it just, we kind of have all the information out there in one place. Um, we, we kind of, we do two different sessions. We do one for residents and then we do another one for like bankers and attorneys and real estate folks, um, just cause it's two different audiences, but everybody is kind of going for the same thing. So we tailor a little bit different, but in all the information's the same. Um, but as far as outcomes. We do have a couple of different um, places that we do have to track that with our CDBG mm -hmm. um, reporting. We certainly have to track how many people we help annually. And we have that as part of our CAPER report um, and then our action plan every year. We have to put those that information in how many down payments we did, you know, assistant programs and um, if we helped people with home rehab. So we have a lot of that information already that's required by law. I imagine you would, but is that accessible publicly, I guess, is really probably what I'm trying to get at and how do we access that? Sure. So if you could shortcut that route for us maybe and share some of that with Michelle. Oh, that would be wonderful. Absolutely. Of course, it's on our city website, but I can certainly send those links. I would appreciate it. Just yeah. for myself, and I'm sure others, if they have an interest, would as well. That's, that's Absolutely. really what I'm thinking. Thank you. In the last meeting we had, I think this conversation came about just a little bit. And in that, uh, thank you. Yeah, in the last meeting we had last month, uh, this conversation, it was touched a little bit. And uh, at that point, I asked a question because we have uh, in the community uh, migrant people mm -hmm. here that have lived yep. in this town for a while now, but they're from uh, a refugee background. Mm -hmm. Now, they've, some of them have lived like 10 years, maybe 12 years, and they have the money that they've been saving, but they do not have the record, you know, to afford them to get a home. So I'm wondering whether you, your office has been working with Ward Relief because I think the only record they have is Ward Relief resettling them down in the city of Ashkash. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do know some, some information on how they can have this opportunity to get some of this housing, that would be great. Sure, yeah. yeah. We do work with World Relief. I do attend their meetings that they have. Um, and uh, we, we know that, you know, that we do have quite a few folks that are being placed in the city here. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, definitely our programs would be something that they could look at. So um, I believe we have, we might have a World Relief member that's going to be appointed to our, um, our rental housing advisory board tomorrow <coughs> night. So it'll be good to have that connection. I think there too. Um, but yeah, and, and, and that's really what we want to do is folks that our programs are kind of that gap that they're just having trouble kind of getting over that hump or there's that last obstacle. And then sometimes when um, maybe lenders or other folks see that there's other resources or other um, entities maybe, uh, you know, are bringing funding to the table that helps people kind of get over that finish line. Yeah. So, um, so like I said, we have a lot of programs, and I, I briefly mentioned the Rental Housing Advisory Board. Um, that's a, an advisory board that the city put together when we started doing our rental registry program. Now, unfortunately, since um, the state did change some of the state statutes, so we cannot do as much as we wanted to with that program. Um, it's voluntary, but the group still meets. And they do do um, guides and education for um, tenants. So it's more like tenant and landlord rights. And it's really to educate folks um, that how our office can help you. And there's attorneys that you can speak to if you have questions or concerns. And it's really just to try to bridge the gap of, you know, what your rights are, what you can and can't do. So to, we want everybody to be living in a safe home here in the city. Um, and there's some things that absolutely, you know, need to meet minimum housing code that should be fixed if needed. So um, that's something that that's another um, committee uh, within the city advisory board uh, that, you know, they're working on that to try to make sure that there's safe places um, for everybody, including, you know, some of the folks that World Relief is working with, too. Right. 
Yeah. Um, so as far as our different programs, like I, you know, like I said, I kind of went over some of them, but um, we, we have the ability to be flexible with them, with some of our pots of money. And something that we just did was a housing study. Um, and we just adopted it earlier this year. I, I will also send a link for that too. And um, it's a page turner. So if you have trouble sleeping some night, you can read this. Um, but it has a lot of great information. Um, first of all, they did a quite um, a, a pretty thorough like demographic review. And it really just shows you know where the population is and how much of the population is spending maybe more than 30% on housing and that sort of thing. So it's kind of helping us understand the residents in Oshkosh, you know, what kind of, what, what, how, you know, they're facing housing and what are they struggling with? And we're using this information um, to look at some of the recommendations in here to try to come up with some new programs that might be a little bit more impactful and helpful to folks right now um, and, and we're always looking for room to improve. So, you know, if this, organ if this group ever has any ideas or anything, you know, please let me know or let Michelle know and we can certainly consider them. Um, but this housing study is really helping us, you know, lead um, our, what we're looking, you know, our housing program. Um, one thing that the housing study did tell us is we need more low, low income housing, which I think we all definitely knew, but we need even high, high, you know, end housing. So we really need different types of housing across the whole spectrum. And, you know, our hope is, you know, by attracting different types of housing, they'll have movement in the market. If somebody moves to something new, then their house opens up and then hopefully it's a domino effect. So um, we're excited to start implementing some of this. And uh, we've had some success already with council approving, um, you know, smaller lots for a developer to build smaller homes that are more affordable for folks. Do you have a question? Yes. So with the um, indication that lower housing rentals are necessary, what rental range is that? It is. Give me one minute here. So the income is $25,000 or less. Okay. I, I, I know that number for sure. It was, it looked at like both housing, um, well, I can't find the page it's on. Um, but it, it did look at both um, if you were renting or if you were owning it. So um, that's the thing, you know, we know we need low, low income and then the higher end, oh, here it is. So zero to twenty-five thousand dollar income range, and that would be your affordable range would be like zero to four hundred ninety-nine dollars a month. And we it says that, and this is rough information. Um, I'm actually we're going to have this updated with 2021 numbers in December when that comes out with the American Community Survey data. Uh, but it says there's a balance of over two thousand. Like we need more than two thousand, you know, of these types of units in this price range. To meet the demand, um, and so it's it's really interesting, um, but it's something that we've really been looking at and been you know um, conscious of when we are making decisions with projects. Um, and council is even looking at it too to say, okay, is this going to fit a need, a gap that we have in our market right now? So um, obviously, it's not you know you can't put everything on it, but um, I think it's been helping council meet you know, their goals of, you know, filling in those gaps of our housing continuum here. Um, that's just obviously having housing for everything, everybody. Um, if it's from the day by day, if it's the tiny home project or COTS, um, you know, some of the LMI, low to moderate income um, tax credit housing projects that they've approved, uh, they're really looking to have that wide variety of housing. So quick, quick question. Um, I've got a couple groups of people on my mind this month. So it's uh, Disability Employment Awareness Month and uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So I'm thinking, or I'm wondering, what role, if any, do you play or assist in getting housing for some of our more vulnerable populations? Like, I know you don't own houses, but... Right. You now, can you talk a little bit about what role you play in some of our more vulnerable people Absolutely. who need housing. Yeah, I can talk about domestic violence. Um, we all know that Christine Nance Center is actually looking at buying the building next door, the beach building. Um, and what they want to do is 
have the first level be kind of just their um, offices, conference rooms. The second level will be that emergency shelter that they need. But the third level would be transitional housing. And transitional housing is something we don't have a lot of here. We have it at COTS, but in a certain special situation like that, it, it needs to be, you know, they need to have their own space. And it's wonderful because those units are set up like apartments. So, you know, where they are now, they're obviously making, you know, doing the best they can do with that space. But it'll be nice that they have a little more privacy with families and everything. So the city um, is contributing towards that with some of the ARPA fund and even with some of our CDBG funding. Um, that's something we're actually looking at being a little more creative with our CDBG allocation every year. Um, we um, provided some funding for the day by day uh, shelter. We're looking at doing it for Christine Ann. Um, so we're trying to make sure that, you know, like I mentioned, the housing continuum, those gaps. Um, and as far as, um, you know, folks with disabilities, when we are working with um, new developers or even some existing ones, obviously they always have to meet all the ADA, um, you know, compliant um, requirements. But we're also looking at like universal design. That's like a step above just ADA. It's if you have maybe a friend that comes in or it, if you are just, uh, you know, you have disabilities to make sure that the different units are, um, you know, more ADA friendly and it, they're more accessible. So that's something that we're really challenging um, the new developers when they're coming in, because it's much easier to do it when you're building rather than retrofitting it. Um, and so that's something that councils also discussed a lot too. Kelly, thank you so much for being here. Um, can you help me connect some dots? I'm wondering what other community partners and organizations you work closely with? Sure. Um, well, with the with the um, housing, we work a lot with our neighborhood associations. We have 23 neighborhood associations, which is amazing. Uh, we have a great group of folks. Um, and then the, kind of a, an umbrella agency to that is the Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhood Initiative. Um, Tom Fojic, um down um, in downtown in the 100 North Main Block. He and he has two staff people, and they're really kind of those boots on the ground folks that facilitate the neighborhood associations. Um, just to engage the people in the neighborhood and kind of create that sense of place. And that's what we really want to do. So that's a group that we work with a lot. Um, I had mentioned the CDBG funding. We actually have public service grants out of that annual allocation every year. So we work very closely with the Christine Ann Center, with Boys and Girls Club, with um, United Way and Solutions Recovery, I mean, really across the board, day by day. Um, we, we are part of other groups like the Winnebago County um, you know, Housing Consortium and all those different organizations that um, I think you know, we definitely should be in tune to kind of what they're doing to make sure that our goals you know, and our different programs align and just to see where those needs are too. Yeah. So with that, I'm more than happy to send um, many different links to Michelle and maybe she can pass on to you. And um, I'm, we're very happy if you have any other follow-up questions, please let me know, but. I have one. Okay. okay. And I will so, have one as well. <laughs> so um, if anyone listening might be interested in any of these programs, what should they do? Uh, we have all the information on the city's website. It's under our planning, uh, the planning de department webpage. So it's right, just go right under government departments, uh, go to planning, um, and we have housing programs right on there. So, um, and then you can always certainly stop by or give us a call. We always have somebody there to help out. Understanding that the study indicates that the lower tier of income um, housing is necessary. Are there developments in the work that would accommodate that lower income range? Um, you know, I, I mentioned the tiny homes, um, day by day cots. Obviously, it's not permanent, um, but it's it's a good start. I think if we would truly want to look at you know low income, it would definitely have to be a partnership with some other agencies if it's not the housing authority or you know something like that it would have to most likely be heavily subsidized i mean we have to we provide um tiff financing assistance for low income housing that maybe north point does you know with like smith school 
um, and you know, but they have tax credits and I mean their capital stack looks like ABC soup it's just all these different acronyms with all these funding so if they're doing that just with you know that sort of um, you know income um, tier if we're kind of making it even lower it's going to take a lot of work so we don't have anything right now in the works but it's definitely something that we've been discussing with some of the community partners and i think there's a need for it as kind of that next step forward for folks so using smith elementary as an example what would be the median rent requirement so it depends on obviously so it depends on how much they make um so for um low income that about 80 percent um if you are one person it's just over forty seven thousand dollars so depends what you make and then that's how they come up with what your rent would be more income based yeah rent. and then they kind of back it up with that and they include utilities and everything but that's something else that we've really been, I think, doing a good job of breaking down those barriers. When you hear low income housing, sometimes you have that, it's a negative reaction. And I you know, tell people, I just spoke at the Wisconsin Housing Economic Development Authority Conference in Madison, and obviously they do all low income housing. And you know what they're doing, it's, I mean, this is housing that our firefighters, you know, that's, that's probably their wage or our teachers that they would you know live there so it's we're really trying hard to break down just that those negative attitudes of if they hear low income and and we're also trying to look at um different ways to encourage more different different types of housing um if somebody wants to do a duplex and maybe live on one side and rent out the other um or else have an adu it's called an accessory dwelling unit maybe above your garage in the back like you know, an in-law suite or something. So we're trying to be, look for creative ways for people to uh, be able to have more housing options, um, you know, available to them within like our zoning code and allowed in the city. Beyond income, um, does the study or are you aware of any other barriers that are preventing um, community members from obtaining housing like? evictions or things like that yeah that's something that we talk a lot about with the rental housing advisory group is evictions that's actually something we're talking about right now okay. um, just if you have those on your record uh, with the limited amount of um, affordable housing right now mm -hmm. and then if you do have unfortunately some something on your record you know you're already at a disadvantage so that's okay. something that they're talking about you know how do we help folks like that that it was just it was maybe a mistake in the past mm -hmm. it's unfortunate but unfor you're still carrying it on your back and now you're struggling so that is something that we work with quite a bit with our partners and there's is there an actual program that allows those that have evictions to kind of rehabilitate that eviction so for example the city of appleton you are able to go through a program there are um landlords that opt into this program and are more willing to rent um, or enter into some other type of home ownership with a potential tenant in order to ensure that they have access to housing after an eviction. Yeah. Is that? That's actually something we're looking at right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, no, that's what we are looking for different avenues that folks could take. Um, okay. Uh, I, right now, I don't think they're allowed just to fully erase it, but if maybe there's like programs that they can go mm -hmm. to and we have willing um, landlords um, and maybe the city can come in and help with some of our program with our funding to help um, entice them, that would be a win-win in our situation. And this may not be something that you can answer, but um, maybe point us in the direction of the metrics regarding evictions and those that are... Yeah, um, there's we, a disparate. Um, we get the evictions um, when we have our meetings. We get how many evictions in Winnebago County. They don't track them specifically in Oshkosh. Okay. It's just the county. Um, but we don't get really any data beyond that. So the demographics of those that are being evicted is not. No, it's just realized. pretty much what's on CPAP. That's unfortunate. Just yeah. based on my experience in the court system and dealing with landlord tenant issues, um, okay. quite frankly, see sure. that um, the disparity is definitely 
there. So I guess I don't know CCAP enough to know if they have. They don't. Okay. No, okay. and the um, CCAP CCAP's ability to indicate those demographics has changed over the last few years. Um, it was okay. more specific to criminal cases, in fact, that CCAP would show race um, and gender, but no, it never really focused on that when it came to civil or small claims, those sure. things that would be related to housing, yeah. um, judgments, things like that. So okay. um, it'd be interesting to see just how um, those in our community are affected by landlord tenant issues, evictions, and how often right. we're seeing um, marginalized communities mm -hmm. being affected by evictions um, because it it really doesn't take a whole lot to evict someone. Right. Judiciary's hands are tied, mm -hmm. so if you have a basis, you're out, and that eviction stays on their record for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and even the movements with CCAP to get rid of, you know, past and historical data, data it's not, the focus hasn't been there. Sure. Um, so it's yeah. just interesting. Yeah. Sorry. I also would like to know, um, so the programs that you have, I know that they are income-based. Mm -hmm. Are they also open to people with, say, felonies on their record? Are they open to people with a criminal record? Yeah. I mean, we, we're really looking more like, where are you now? And sure. you know how are you? Do you have a stable job, or you you could pay back the you know the loan or whatever? So that's kind of what we really analyze. But the housing itself isn't focused on the ability for those that have criminal convictions or evictions to get in. That, am I correct in that? So if there's a felony, which oftentimes it may be drug related yeah. felony that prevents well one leads to an eviction and then typically a landlord may not want to rent to someone that has certain convictions, sure. felony, I'm not talking about a violent offense. Um, is there any look by the city in giving grants or assistance to developers for housing to uh, have something in that agreement that would give an actual look at the tenant sure. beyond just a conviction or an eviction? Yeah. Is that part of the process when these funds are given to um, developers? It's not right now, just because like you said, it's more of a private ordeal where we don't get involved with it, but maybe it is something where, um, you know, if, if, if a landlord is giving somebody, you know, an opportunity and, mm -hmm. you know, they're on the right track and everything. And obviously yeah. we work with a lot of different agencies that works with folks like that. That definitely could be something, you know, that maybe we could look at a program like that yeah. to encourage that. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for your time, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. That thank you very so much. Very information. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Thank, thank you. you. Um, next, we have plan facilitation and development. We have um, Alonzo Kelly here. Welcome, Alonzo. We're so glad you could be here with us. Um, and so we were asked to look at section one of um, our current draft. And I believe, yes, that is attached to our packets right now. So um, I, I suggest maybe we start there, unless Alonzo, um, you being our facilitator, no, no please. <laughs> I'm, I'm going <laughs> to follow your lead. <laughs> well, I was going to follow yours. <laughs> um, so um, we have, you know, currently our, um, you know, this draft of a strategic plan, but at our most um, recent meeting, so just to catch you up, we did meet with council um, last month, and there was a little bit more clarification on um, what this strategic plan is to look like. And so um, it, it sounds like this is a little bit like above and beyond the scope of what <laughs> um, was expected and really what council is looking for are just five, six, seven goals related to our committee. Um, 
Right, am I? Right, right am I? So I think what <laughs> was stated is that I think there was a realization that maybe the approach that we had, had was um, going into too much detail and more having the goals and how we would um, track those goals, like the metrics that would be involved in those goals um, instead of having the specificity in which we were attempting to have when it came to certain areas. Um, so I think that that gave us a little bit more guidance um, so that we didn't feel like we were just on a hamster wheel and <laughs> <laughs> rolling around, we weren't on our feet. Um, but <laughs> I think that that was, it helped um, us realize that we had to have the general goals and how we would be able to those goals um, but section one or prior to section one um, you know as part of this document um, you know I think it's important that we include our land acknowledgement um, our committees uh, a message from the mayor possibly a you know, person of welcoming and um, the importance of our committee um, and then a committee's message which um, you know, maybe this might be a great place for us to start with the committee message. So you'll see that on um, a couple pages into the, the draft. Um, so if you not, have not had a chance to look through that, maybe we'll just spend a, couple, a minute or two um, looking through that and we can start there um, as far as the message we want to convey to um, our community members. As a, as a matter of clarity, what, what happens next with our draft? Like, I'm, I instantly go to the last paragraph. We offer this initial draft, like, to who? Is that to the community or to the, to the council? I think the intent is that this would be shared with, you know, this would be public. Um, and it would be, um, I mean, it's goes to council for their approval right. um but really i think it's a plan that we want shared with um, our community i i ask because if this is our statement mm -hmm. i i would read it as there's something else coming mm -hmm. you know what i mean versus this is our message like Correct. If, if we were going to do like a whole what's our mission like this is what we do and our vision is who are we becoming? Mm -hmm. Like it would be very definitive versus we offer this to you almost for your consideration, but I'm not sure that's what we're doing. Okay. That, I agree with you. Right? Yeah. Okay. I agree with you that the message should not make one believe that give us your feedback and it may be continuing to change until we have the final product so I guess my question along those same lines is the purpose of the committee's message currently it kind of it gives the work that was hope the work that was done in furtherance of establishing this community it kind of gives like that historical like you know basically the pandemic hit and then you know there was a multitude of ideas and opinions and we wanted to be able to share them um, but I wasn't sure if that's how we were moving forward with the message I didn't so we have the mission statement and then the message from the committee would be speaking to the members of the community. Right, just, um, you know, I think the purpose of the committee's message was more like, like a letter, you know, like from us to, you know, anyone who reads this. Um, there's just a, you know, that paragraph around like, 
when we started. You know, it was a very poignant time in our history. Um, and then kind of goes into some of our, you know, first meetings and how um, we came to formation and didn't really have clear direction. And yet, you know, we kind of came together and um, bringing our area, our lived experiences and stories and trying to, um, you know, work towards a communal um, plan and purpose. Um, but, uh, you know, this is a draft and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, we're all open to wanting it to be a communal message from all committee members. So I, I actually like the message if you change the word message, because then it makes a little more sense to me. Like if we had a DEI committee message, which was however it would read, you know, we are a, a gathering of community members representative of the city we live and love, right? And like a, our statement. And if you had a DEI committee history, <laughs> Like this reads as like a, a journey. Like our first meeting was held on, this is what was going on. And then as we were forming our mission statement, it's like a history of how we arrived mm -hmm. at, at this point. Mm -hmm. But the message, I would, I would think like, if you were giving a message, glad you're here, this is who we are, this is what we are charged with, this is what we aim to achieve you know what I mean? Like the message doesn't have to be very long sure. <laughs> because we could accidentally say too much. I will say I like that it, it is an introduction because like we've talked about a few times, I think a lot of people in the city don't know we have a DEI committee. They don't know, you know, what we do or why we're here. Um, so I like that this does highlight kind of the start of the committee and where we kind of want to see it going. Um, I do think it overall would be a good introduction to the community um i like it i i think you know some minor changes to yeah kind of set that this is you know what we are because i do i do see your point in that i would think that there's more to come after reading this um but i do think having this as like an initial like this is who we are this we're here um this is kind of the history of it because when i've told people about the committee they also don't know you know what what it's really centered around they've heard of dei committees but they don't really know what what we're doing in oshkosh specifically so i think that it's a good message overall angie if, if you're still open and can can hear a little more feedback because yes. and then i would so suggest maybe we move into some more details because this is going to could go on for a while but that's just my opinion um it sounds like what i'm hearing is the two audiences that have been defined are one just a letter more of a point in time kind of what this is to council mm -hmm. which i think is important it just seems to be what this might be and maybe a subset or a spin-off would be a message with to the community one that i think you're trying to sort of attach to this document mm -hmm. you know as a more formal statement and which i think <coughs> we can still craft but that would be my suggestion because i'm hearing two audiences and i think that's collectively what I, I'm hearing me speak to, but that would be my recommendation. We just keep it kind of as it is. We can tweak it a little, but I think this one speaks more to something going to council personally, and we maybe we can refine it some more. Um, I don't know if we really want to take the time, and that's how we want to spend our time for this. It's kind of going with the flow, but there, and it's not too much to go through. But so yeah, I, I don't know how how, de how detailed we want to go with that. So I'll stop there. Um. Could it be that, um, you know, from f until our next meeting that we would maybe take a look at this part and you can make suggestions right onto the document and, you know, for wording, phrases, however um, feedback you want to put in, um, that would be helpful. Um, so, yeah, I think um, as far as, you know, like the background and um, some of the introductory you know there's there is a part of the draft where we have the executive summary and just kind of like playing I was playing around with different areas of like what message and information we should include in each of the areas and um, so the executive summary does kind of go through um, 
the snippets from our, you know, our ordinance um, that is a little bit, that is a lot more direct in what we've been tasked with. Um, and so any suggestions on what else might or should be uh, included into the executive summary or maybe what should be omitted? The only thing I would comment on, Angie, is you, um, we have duty number four, but we don't have duties number one, two, or three in the summary. Um, so it's kind of missing the other three duties. From the, I mean, I, I have the ordinance in front of me because oh, sure. I brought it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, um, Number one is to serve as a resource, recommend goals, and advise the city manager and common council on existing, existing and or proposed city ordinances, program development and actions, as well as best practices for health, housing, and economic mobility to promote community equity and inclusion for all those who live, work, and learn in diverse Oshkosh. I think that one sounds like a pretty important one if you're going to have a summary. So. Um, I, I did, I'm sorry I didn't bring copies for everybody, but I, I think if you're going to do a summary on the duties, I would definitely okay. do all of them. So, Angie, first let me say your leadership's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. awesome. So I, I offered before and I'll offer again. Like, I, I recommend we separate what and why from how and when. Like, what are we and why are we are things we put in a statement. And then where I think the feedback from before came and even like within one year of creation, that's a how. Like how were we going to meet duty four? But we didn't list the other three. Well, now we're missing three and now we got to say how to versus our ordinance includes but is not limited to the following duties. Right. Like that's what we do <laughs> and, and leave it at that. It's where I said like, you know, we could, we could say too much and then we're held accountable for how did we do that? How did we do that? How did we do that? Versus explaining what we do and then invite people to participate in the meetings since I know they can hear me. <laughs> Hello out there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but d does that does that make sense? It does. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, Alonzo, I'm thinking back to your recommendation, and um, mm -hmm. I want to. I'll pull that up in just a minute. But um, to review, um, I think one, I guess, step that has been really omitted is community feedback as part of this um, plan development yeah. and um, and I know that currently there's a community survey out and I'm really curious um, I'm not sure like what the timeline of that is Michelle or John if you know that would um, I would appreciate that information um, but I'm really interested in what kind of feedback, com like most recently, what feedback comes out. I'm, I'm not familiar with the community survey. What what community? Like, what are we asking the community? Um, we we do participate in a, an annual community survey um, through Polco, and oh, it looks like I have an expert coming to answer this question. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Jake Tim. I work in Oshkosh Media down here on the first floor, media services for the city. Um, we, every year, uh, over the last, I'm not sure how long we've been doing it, have administered the citizen survey, what it used to be called. We used to work with UW Oshkosh and the folks over there to do that. This year, we are working with our uh, public engagement software that we already had called Polco, which you may have heard of or have taken surveys on before. Um, and we are participating in the National Community Survey which will allow us in the end to kind of benchmark certain things against other communities throughout the state and throughout the country. So I heard a question about timeline. Um, right now, they are doing what they consider or call it, and when I say they, I mean Polco. They are, um, it's the wave one portion of the survey, which they are mailing to randomly selected households in the city. They determine that through, um, demographic studies and voter records and things of that nature. Um, 
And so right now, people are getting a mailed version of that survey. We didn't, we had no hand in selecting who that was, and they're kind of handling the scientific version and the collection of that. Folks have an option to either do that online or do it on a paper survey that they send in the mail. And then on November 1st, they will open that survey up to everyone in the community, and that's online. So they use um, GIS info that we provided them through our community development department, as well as zip codes to determine the area of where that, how broad that area is for the city proper and where that survey will go. So um, that's kind of the basic overview. I can try to answer as many questions as you might have. Mm -hmm. um, and is this an annual study or? Yeah, so the citizen survey is annual. Um, because we kind of switched up how we're administering that through Polco this year, usually, John, was it usually a spring thing? Usually it would be in the spring when we would administer that. Just because of the nature of how this was presented as an opportunity from Polco, this one's being done in the fall. I believe the plan is to turn right back around and get back on that spring schedule next year. We have money budgeted to do this through Polco again next year. So we're kind of going to get a, a double dip in this next you know, eight to 10 months where we do one now and then do it again in the spring and then we'll be back on the annual schedule to do it in the spring. Do we know when we'll get any results from that then? The plan, uh, and we, we worked quickly, Mr. Fitzpatrick and HR and, and the folks who are all working on this, kind of accelerated the plan so that we could get results and an in-person um, presentation from Polco staff before the end of the year. There's only one council meeting in December and they're aware of that. So I believe, and I don't want to speak for them, but I believe the plan is for them to present to council in that first meeting in December. Um, but if not, it, I would anticipate that in early 2023. I'm a, I'm a both and guy. So to, to the issue of like, we should ask community, right? So I'm not familiar with the survey. So for the fun of it, let me tell you how I can mess with the integrity of the data. Sure. So let's say my wife is white and um, my kids identify as mixed race. You would think there's only one black person on my block. So I don't know how these surveys are collecting, like, it, is it self-identify or is it according to record? Because the fastest growing race is mixed race. Everybody seems to be clicking mixed race now, no matter what. So we lose understanding a percentage population of who's in the community based on how we are identifying. So I think the survey is awesome and I'm glad that we're doing it. And I learn a lot more from a face-to-face -face conversation with people too. Like, how are you feeling? So I think there's a way that we could consider supplementing information, but you have to have something and we are all about, we need something, so. Yeah, this is a first step, and we'll, yep. this is the first year we've done this with, with Polco, so certainly we're going to learn a lot yep. and then take input from everybody, this group included, and, uh, and make it better year over year is the plan. So. So, thank you for doing that. Of course, thank you. Jake and Alonzo to your point, um, I think the, the qualitative, the conversations is what <laughs> is part of our yeah. like, ask and part of our, um, you know, I bet or I would like to include as one of our goals for our committee is to have those conversations and get that community yeah. um, input. Um, and, you know, as far as I, I've, I've looked at that, um, I've looked at the data um, uh, recently, and I know that in, um, in the last two years that people have reported that um, they, you know, like 30%, 30 to 35%, I believe, of our community members don't feel like Oshkosh is a safe or a welcoming community. Um, and, I, and I know that some of these questions are repeated and, you know, it'll be on um, this, this year's or this cohort's um, um, survey. So I'm curious what, what um, yeah. information we'll gather from that. Um, so Alonzo, to um, so in regards to that, um, how do you suggest um, we I guess like weave in some of that data into this plan? 
If, if I'm understanding your question, nothing about the data has come up in anything we mentioned yet. It's not in the message nor in the executive summary. This is, this is what we do and why we do it so far. So the data and populations wouldn't be in this part. Yeah, because by the time I read this, that changed. And I would not recommend we build something that has to be updated every year. We'll be changing this all the time. So not yet. Yes, but not yet. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. So as far as um, just going back to the executive summary, the feedback that I've received is um, provide summary of other duties, um, other comments or other um, information that you think should go on this executive summary. And we can this will be another area. Please feel free to um, open the doc and add comments and feedback on that. Okay. And I mean, maybe Angie, it doesn't have to be this formal either. And maybe it could even just, you know, rather than an executive summary, be part of the letter to the community of these are the things we've been tasked with. I mean, this is this is very formal, which is great, but maybe it's too much um, and that you know just in addressing to the community what the DEI committee is um, rather than listing this whole thing uh, just a little summary of, of what the duties of this committee are might be you know sometimes less is more is I guess all I'm saying absolutely no I um, agree with you and you know there's that statement at the bottom where it says that um, you know we're being really intentional about our writing, our formatting, so it's so it's ex most accessible to as many people as, um, oh. as it can be. And you know, really, I was looking at the Oregon, the Beaverton, Oregon <laughs> document, and then like I know our Sustainability Advisory Board, their strategic plan is like ninety some pages, <laughs> and so um, you know, like those, I I didn't have many models, for, you know, and um, so. I hear yeah. there's a lot of pictures in the sustainability <laughs> plan, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, and I and the Arts and Beautification Committee as well, you know, like, I, I also followed that format. So I was just kind of piecing together different, you know, what I saw is what I thought was needed to be produced. <laughs> um, but I agree. I think maybe informal is, you know, will be more accessible to people and um, just I guess like parallel to what you know Moshe you have said before that like just because this is City Hall people feel like it's intimidating or you know don't feel safe entering like maybe a document like this in its executive summary like introduction you know like maybe that's you know doesn't feel as accessible rather than like a plain like PDF or something you know well, so. and I, I think you're on to something and I'm glad we're having this discussion quite honestly because again I go back to define our audience and we're asking this to be a catch-all for everyone but a charge has started with ultimately reporting to a governing body of the city here a municipal representative body that it's pretty darn formal if you think about it I could go and have a conversation with them but it's not going to be received at a way that is you know required so we're kind of stuck in the format to some extent in my opinion that it is somewhat formal and format I would suggest that we as a committee figure out from a design standpoint and I'm not a designer I'm just an artist and educator and other things that I identify in that way but I do understand that translating this in, in this broadest sense from something formal to understandable would be a big part. And I think we have Oshkosh in the community media. We've talked about roundtables and discussions. What a great way to discuss this. Like, what the heck does this mean? Yeah. And let's sit down and have a conversation about it right there in the public. I mean, we could get creative in how we use this, but I, I personally think we're gonna get 
stuck in a, in, a, in, a, in a process here if we aren't very clear in some of these, these, def these, these tracks that we have to follow. And in my opinion, we're sort of stuck in a bit of a formal track. As much as we know a more informal presentation is going to be really kind of required. Like I wouldn't ask my auntie to sit down and read some of this and figure out what the heck it's supposed to mean, right. even if I narrow it down to just read this page. <laughs> You know, yeah. it, those realities, and if we're really talking about trying to understand the impact and the role in helping people, I think that really is a big charge that we aren't really yet to the point of being able to discuss until now, perhaps. But I, so I would suggest we just stay on this formal track, kind of just work with this, but keeping in mind maybe a parallel path to how do we figure out how are we going to communicate, even what we've done thus far, in a way different way. Because I know so many people that literacy, even functionally literacy, is, you know, that, that's a barrier for so many reasons. Just even the ability to read. Like, I was thinking of my, my friends that are, are, are deaf and blind. Mm -hmm. Like, man, they need translators to read it and then print it out and type up things that you're, you're feeling, different, different ways of communicating, printing out braille sheets and other things. Like, there are a lot of ways that we could get down to the nitty gritty of it. But... That's all I'll say. So I think we can get really creative in how we translate what we create here, and I'd suggest don't deviate too far from getting off, you know, to some other type of a document because this does have to be a catch-all in some ways. But maybe that'll keep us moving. That's my only thinking. Thank you. I think, you know, one of our goals should be: could we, you know, put all this information into like one brochure? <laughs> you know, that could like be a trifold, <laughs> just like the house, you know, like the housing um, department. Um, like ultimately like we'd be it, it would be great to just have like one brochure that has our mission you know statement like our goals and how to get in touch with us and just have a nice trifold so that's definitely a good um, design question and something we should be thinking about as we're developing mm -hmm. this but um, I agree also that we're on this formal track and to um, Maybe we don't need all the components that were initially listed out, um, but some form Well, I think, yeah, personally, I think we should keep it as is. That's not my suggestion. Just I'm just trying to keep us moving along to some extent. Some, sometimes <laughs> I know. I'm impatient. <laughs> That's why I love you. Um, <laughs> sometimes I know I harp on language, and, and I'll tell you why it's important. So when I read, create a more welcoming if I were born and raised here and felt like Oshkosh was just fine, then I will naturally resist it, like more as if it's not already. So I think some of the current we swim up against is we put people in a position to defend, right? So if we were to simply say the mission of our committee is to, I don't know, create and sustain or sustain a welcoming and leave the more out of it, then we would get people who are thinking we're saying they're not to, to not fight, if you will. Like it, for a lot of us, we're transplants. I mean, the diversity here in Oshkosh for the most part are, are transplants, right? So here I come in a community where people have lived their whole life and I go, I'm gonna need you to be more. It doesn't matter what the word is after that. like. Wait, what? <laughs> so, and I love the language to Ashley's point. I'm not saying get rid of it. Like, I like all of it. So, it's an and. It's and an I and. It's I'm an and, and guy. <laughs> and I think it's supportive of what Ashley said earlier. Um, don't forget that we are among a very diverse population in Ashkash. A lot of people can't read, people have different levels of reading. And I think that when they think of the city of Ashkash, the city hall, they are scared. <laughs> already and I think when we put up message like this um, on top of our key points I think we need to remind ourselves that keep the message friendly so that when it when it when they approach your message they feel welcome they feel like um, it's something that they want to know uh, but if we keep it pretty straight and strict I think that scares people and they don't want anything to do with it so um, it's important that we keep it friendly too I agree that it's important to keep it somewhat formal because truthfully when they come in here and they if they were to come and talk to us they would see a somewhat formal you know how we hold our meetings um, but 
I do think it's important to really emphasize that we are community members. You know, when it comes down to it, they're coming in and they're talking to community members. They're talking to people, you know, they see on the street every day. We are all, you know, community members. So I think that in itself and who we are, you know, as individuals and when we come together as a committee does help our case in being more welcoming, more friendly. Um, but I, I do agree that it needs to keep some formality, though. They're all really good points. Um, okay. I'm just going to peruse here the rest of our, um, of section one. Maybe instead of um, going through like the wording, could we look through the different sections and see if <coughs> these are areas that we want to keep as part of our. Um, of section one. So section one, the introduction starts with a plan mission. Um, and maybe this would be redundant in you know, just stating why this plan exists, um, because we're already doing that in, in the executive summary. Or we could just have a short statement of like, this, the plan of this mission is to, you know, communicate to all community members of uh, the purpose of our organ of our committee as well as what goals we hope to achieve something very simple like that works for me keep it mm -hmm. okay guys okay. so purpose of plan yeah just make sure it aligns with whatever we put in the summary in the executive summary and we can work again on the in the wording yeah. off offline to some extent yeah Okay, um, one section one um, one point one plan mission. Oh, okay, sorry, I, I didn't realize it's on the next page. Uh, all right, so it's just how it printed. <laughs> you know, when it's I'm a like, draft document, it just prints funny. You know what? I'm like, I didn't think I left that blank. But <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm a little out of it today. Um, okay, it was section one point two guiding principle. So. This was literally just um, copied and pasted from the Arts and Beautification Strategic Plan just to give us an idea of what um, kind of language or information that we might want to include. Um, and then at the bottom, I, um, I just listed some notes that, that from a book that I'm reading that I think um, maybe how I wanted to frame this, but... Um, do you think that guiding principles would be important to include? And if we do, I think it needs to be communal. The only thing I would mention is because the city has guiding principles, I wouldn't want there to be confusion uh, okay. uh, because we do have our nine guiding principles, um, which you know one of them is inclusivity, another one of them is assess, uh, equity, uh, equitable, actually. Um, so I, I just wouldn't want to confuse people with having guiding principles that are different than the city. So maybe a different verbiage Wording, around that. Sure. Like framework or um, lens. What I'm struggling with is you have a couple hows in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like what's, what's the issue that creating a gathering space would solve? Because that's a how. Like whatever the issue is, I think we need to create a gathering space. Like I don't see that as a principle. No, it's just those were those were just dropped in there as examples, like holders for us to think. You know, right? Yeah, none of those necessarily, as far as oh. I understand, Angie. Correct. Were, were relevant okay. to okay. our committee. Just examples filling in the space. So like here's here's where the the committee could help me right to Ashley's point because we could get stuck in a box, like where how far would I have to go to read the committee? However, this reads: housing, transportation, education, like that, like how how deep into the the draft would I have to go to see that this committee is thinking about that? 
you know, in my opinion, that's what the executive summary would contain. Are okay. like, okay, <laughs> here's some of the reasons in this. But in my opinion, as we draft it, I would drop in. Yeah, you have these areas that we're focused right. on in this document, so people know. That's the way I see executive summaries. That should be sooner drafted. rather than later. Yeah, right? so you would get that initial upfront. People know there's a formality, so you go through these first pages of the plan, the mission, some clarity on language, perhaps, or how we get public engagement, etc. And then, you know, I think it flows. If we aren't looking at the rest of the document, but if I recall, it jumped right into some different um, areas and, and sections of action or activity and potential outcomes. So. That's if I'm remembering yeah. the way this document flowed in general. Yeah, and currently it's at section four, which would be the. Um, and maybe I'm wrong on section four. We don't have. I, I didn't write right. the whole I thing. I understand. Th yes, thank you for saving a couple of choices. But, but you understand my right. question, right? Because I, I didn't ask it earlier when we had our presenter, but I was thinking to myself, we got a whole lot of land you could build affordable housing on, but you can't take a bus to it. Like, how are you supposed to get to work? <laughs> and that, so none of these are in isolation. Right. Right? So, anyway. But those are opportunities for us if we were to focus right. on a body of work. And, again, that's not what we're talking about. This, you know, we can insert those, those, those points, of, I, I believe. I agree that they would be good in the executive statement to kind of say this is what we're – going to be discussing and this is what our work is kind of based around so to some extent you should almost not do the executive statement till we do the body i mean so, so sometimes you know have you ever written a paper and it's like you know you have your introduction paragraph you have your body and then you have your conclusion i always had to write my body before i could write my introduction uh, because once i knew what i was talking about i could go and then Tell everybody what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Trial mm -hmm. practice, I always focused on the testimony and then yep. I built my case from there. <laughs> and just a reminder that, you know, this is dynamic and yep. um, will be ever evolving. Um, not that we don't want, you know, we want to definitely like have a deadline and publish this at some point, but um, to that up until that time, you know, all feedback is welcomed and um, all of your thoughts and opinions are extremely valuable. Um, okay, so uh, section 1.3 is on a plan lens and that just, um, this I um, took from the Beaverton, Oregon plan and it just gives like an overview of their lens um, so they use race as their primary lens for their for their plan um, so I guess one really big question that we need to answer is as a committee is that the lens by which we want to write this um, I, I don't I know say, that you need this section <laughs> yeah I was one number one I, I don't know if we need this section because okay. to me it would sort of be embodied and captured in the guiding Whatever, whatever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> something other than principles, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot about this. I just, just it, I don't know that it'd be necessarily do us any good to state because uh, okay. some of it's factual, but some of it's going to be more divisive right out the gate. Some of it's going to be contested, and it's other thing, and and that's not the intent. So, okay. in my opinion. I agree. I think combining them, and you had mentioned using the word framework instead of principles. I do think that would be a good way to kind of use section 1.2 to kind of be encompassing of what we kind of go over on 1.3 as well. Okay. Hey. Are you going to say something? Or? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> you know. No, I was... Um, section 1.4 key terms does the committee feel that it's important to define key terms that the you know that the reader would be coming across consistently I think it's difficult without having the substantive areas of this completed mm -hmm. then determining well what does this mean and then doing that key term section until we have it laid out we don't know what terms we're going to be using I don't want to be forced to use terms that may not fit with 
yeah, I think that's kind of the last thing. What areas do we need to define for the reader? But it's an important section to have. Yes, I'm just and saying we that just I don't. Need to com yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making sure we're all clear on that front. Thank you. Um, section 1.5 says public engagement. Um, so I think this is an area where, you know, we talk about maybe the survey, some of the results from the survey, um, and as well any feedback that we have from community members, although, and, and maybe even just put it out there like we would like more public engagement, more. <laughs> Please talk to us. <laughs> you know, like that it is our intent and one of our goals to um, have more community um, engagement. But thoughts on this section? I think what I've read in the uh, city report, you know, that uh, Mr. Roloff put together some years ago on the general survey or analysis of need for a diversity coordinator position oh, sure. in that document they really go into a little more detail and layering of, of these sources of our surveys and that is read in some other documents we had uh, it really kind of spelled out all of those sources of data so I think it would be important to include because this is what we're building our information off of in part we're not paying for another survey to be conducted we're utilizing this one that was just discussed earlier maybe other sources so if there are other sources that we're going to be having access to, maybe Michelle. I mean, those things we might know up front. It's like uh, I don't, I don't like what other, what other ways are there? I think a, an open statement of like, here's how to engage. We could craft a statement would be important, you know, to remind people. But again, like that we're seeking information and engagement, and we are a member of community member body of community members that we. You know, somehow making it very friendly and just, again, reminding people of these core principles throughout might be helpful in this section as well. And again, it's, we need to craft it, but other than if we aren't reporting how we're obtaining community you know, input or how we intend to, or then I wouldn't know why this would be here. But I think we have some things we're talking about. There's a future-oriented event. You know, I don't know how bold we get because it's still in the planning of sorts, but that might be an opportunity, again, to lead with next year we're looking this event is being planned you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, maybe there's some annual things that are already going on I don't know as examples but yeah I don't know public engagement how do you want to use it is it a report out or is it like you said how to engage us how do you get a or hold of in. us how mm -hmm. do you give us your your thoughts and feedback is that yeah so it's yeah so that's I'm wondering like you know it's a public engagement goes both ways so right. what are we describing here would be helpful and or just include both and just, just here's what we've done we're going to do and here's how engage perhaps well, that concludes section one um, please you know um, this next month if you can take a look at it um, and I think everyone has access to the shared document um, everyone should and if you haven't clicked on the link lately that I send pretty much every month um, please do so and if you have any issues accessing please let me know Angie can I have we and maybe I missed it have we given ourselves a deadline to get through what we've started like I thought we were going to try to produce something to get to council even an abbreviated version you know maybe just a core focus area in our exercise like once we get through some of this maybe I'm just maybe that's in my own head but I, I don't you know I look at the minutes they're never detailed enough to capture that level you know so I'll have to look at the, the recording but I know I think after our last meeting having um, a little bit more clarity I thought well we already have like a chunk of this done now we just have to like kind of take out or we just have to kind of clear you know or maybe reduce I don't know if that's the right word but um, focus we might want to focus yeah. on yes. some areas so, so but maybe then I, I would ask all of us in, in as we're providing our inputs just take a look at it to see what we already have filled in and is there an area that maybe we should focus on I don't know we can communicate it to Angie somehow or 
But I, I feel like, you know, again, this is all good and foundational and it's necessary to, to, to send something, I think, in even a professional manner to counsel. But I, I do want them to have something to consider sooner than later, um, especially in p relation to the diversity coordinator position. Um, we've heard enough, you know, there's, there's a, it may already be too late, I'm not sure what we're gonna do on that. Uh, but anyhow, this might not be the appropriate spot for it, but. Yeah, I mean, and you know, just looking ahead, section two talks about existing conditions and you know, history of DEI efforts, existing DEI resources. Maybe those that section is not necessary for what we submit in this, in this first um, in this first submission. Um, and then section three as well. Again, you know, this was these um, headers were taken from the arts and beautification. Um, strategic plan and I understand like you know we're a different committee but as far as strategic plan I just kind of followed that skeleton so I mean with if we agree then maybe we can take out section two and section three and just kind of submit you know what we have is section one and then section four which is the action plan which are the goals um, and then the identified necessary resources communication and best practices Oh, I mean, honestly, I think existing conditions, we are asked to, you know, when we do make a recommendation, we kind of give some data backing up why we're proposing X, Y, or Z. So that, to me, would be sort of either a part of this, what we are demonstrating the action plan. It could, that, that could contain, theoretically, in my mind, here's the existing condition. If we need to spell it out further, you know, we can always give our references in the actual action plan like here's what we're trying to you know impact you know I'm just, I'm just thinking you could possibly write it in a way where we capture some of that sure. um, and we are kind of in my opinion sort of identifying the vision and stuff in the earlier guiding principles and mission that perhaps I mean so in section two I kind of see that as what um, the city staff is currently right. compiling as our, their DEI metrics so maybe that's a section that city staff can contribute to, you know, we just kind of yeah. leave it open and I don't know, <laughs> thoughts on that. Um, I mean, as far as like DEI effort, you know, I, I I guess I can ask a couple people that I know that have, you know, that are, um, that have lived here for a long time on what some of the, the DEI efforts have been in the past. Um, just but keep so, in mind, Angie, we didn't ask anyone to comment on to prepare <coughs> for or prepare sure. for that for this meeting. But I really, you know, I, I just don't want us to go too far on that without having everyone kind of being on the same sure. level as, as you are. Because obviously I know you know it much more intimately than everyone else does. Um, can, I, can I ask a quick follow-up question to what Ashley just made me think about? As, as we are reading this, as I'm reading this, and I hear the word strategic plan, to me that's a window. So, so how, what, what's our window for this plan? Is this like a five year? I, you know, some kind of guidance, like how should I be looking at this? This is our plan for the next fill in the blank amount of time. How long did we say that is, or we haven't? I don't know that that's been defined necessarily. Okay. At least not very overtly. Not that I want to lock us into a number, but you know, strategic plan does have an end date. <laughs> so, okay. Language. I'll just focus on language without that part. I got you. Um, but to your point, I mean, do we want to try to set a deadline for when something is submitted? Or even just for our own working pace, that's sure. all. I mean, we can no, chip I away at this one at a time, but I, you know, I generally fail on getting my homework done on time, but I always like to at least push myself a bit to at least sure. get something moving, but that's just me. I, was... Does the committee feel comfortable looking at the plan in its entirety by the next meeting? And when is that? Look at it and be prepared to... I'm sorry. No, I was just when is that? When is the next meeting? 
it is, is uh, November 20, whatever the Monday is before 28. Thanksgiving. No. <laughs> it's the Monday after Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, the twenty eighth. Yes, thank you. I had to I had to count the Mondays. I am not the facilitator. So, what is an advisable, recommended piece of uh, you know how big of a bite should we try taking? I, you know, what do you hope to accomplish? I just Before like to. Before we get there, can I just? I yeah, think please. my memory of our um, last meeting with council. I may have take, walked away from that with a different understanding than everyone else. Um, just simply because I walked away with this like aha moment of being like this was overcomplicated. Um, but I also wasn't involved until three months ago um, and there hasn't been much movement on it. But that meeting, I walked away with like an aha moment as far as what they needed from us. It wasn't necessarily something that needed to be in its completion and in its enti like entire completion in order for the council members to begin including this committee in some of the decisions that are being made for the city. And so what I took away is that council would really like to know how we are going to be involved and how they could best utilize us. Mm -hmm. And so they were looking for that. And so it's, this is how we want you to use us. This is how we implant, intend to be resourceful to the council uh, members and to the community. And using that as a basis for growing it into this, which is its formal, the for formal, plan um, and so that's what so I'm lost and that's probably just because of my way of thinking and what I felt I walked away from that from is what are we doing with what's our role when it comes to the council um, members and how are they best to utilize us the expectation that we are informed about many of the things that are on their agenda so that we can weigh in on it was one of those things that we had discussed. And so now we're spending today on some of the more technical parts of a document as opposed to our ability to be a committee that's useful to the community as well as the council because we had had those kind of, not necessarily gripes, but we're finding out things after they're making they're voting on it and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like well wouldn't you want input from this committee um before you voted on that mm -hmm. have you considered x y and z before this went to a vote and so that's what i thought we would focus on and from those core goals uh we would then build the plan around that but and I just want to throw it out there. <laughs> so yeah. that's all, um, because I think that we would be able to really give council an idea, the expectations that we would have as committee. None of us wanted us, no, we don't wanna just be like the lip service, like, oh, we have the committee. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have a committee, we're good. No, we want to be used, we want to have um, a voice when it comes to decisions that are being made at the highest levels of the city of Oshkosh because it is so important mm -hmm. to have that um, input. And so how are we able to do that? How are we connecting with the community and how are we going to be used by the council? That's what I thought we were going to be focusing on. And from there, what do we need in order to weigh in is you know, the metrics, the numbers, the, um, that kind of stuff, surveys, all of that. But like, we will need to, we would need those numbers to see where focus needs to be heavily and how we can then change those numbers into positives for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I'm having a hard time with this because I'm not thinking about it the way that I walked away from that meeting, that's all. 
Anyone else? <laughs> yes, no, I, I, I appreciate that, uh, Keisha, because I'm, I think this is the, I don't want to call it a trap, but this is what we fall into. It's like we have this immediate need, and we found a way based, especially it was confirmed and validated, in my opinion, for all the reasons you've noted in this last meeting. We were, you know, trying to understand what's coming in the pipeline for council's decision. Like, where do we need to be focusing some immediate attention on? And I was hoping to get some input, maybe from our liaison uh, or someone else, as to what just happened this last go around. You know, mm -hmm. like there were some things, and I know there have been decisions on additional money being put out. You know, additional projects that were talked about. Fortunately, um, uh, by Kelly, she she mentioned the work with you know, uh, Christine Ann and some of these other initiatives. But I have to say, absent her being here and telling us that, would how many of you would be aware of some of those initiatives? Nope. Right, and how many people listening would have been? So I'm just gonna propose to this point, because I, to avoid perhaps us going down this path on these short-term objectives and this longer range project that we try to make inroads on, and then we have something immediate to respond to or things that we try to deal with and then it goes back and forth. So perhaps, you know, just for future agendas, we just simply focus on what is what just happened from council and what's council going to be dealing with based on sort of this understanding that we have of future interests and things that might, you know, be on our radar. We were also asked, I believe, by one of our council persons, and I forget her name, and I'm sorry, um, was to sort of really what kind of a tool can we provide? What guidance can we provide, you know, administration or, or others to sort of help them determine and say, hey, maybe this is something we should field over to the DEI committee. I would maybe help them decide in their decision making, perhaps. You know, I don't really know if this would, and maybe I should reach out to the committee as, in, you know, as a council person. Or, you know, again, administration, somebody to say, hey, here's what's on the agenda. Somebody can kind of filter it if that's what we've asked them to do. I don't know, I think there was, there was something there as well, like some concrete tools, like we were asked to kind of really help fa facilitate decision making. It, was, it was, would have been welcomed, not that they need it, but I would just say that. Let's focus on the, <laughs> the um, you know, what's coming down the pipeline and as far as decisions. Can we get a report out of what just happened at the last council meeting? Because quite honestly, as much as I wanted to, I've not looked back at the recordings. I know there was some juicy stuff I was looking to, you know, hear about, but I've not had time, you know, uh, or not taken the time. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Um, but anyhow, and then focus the other part on this as well as our public piece, um, right. because I would really like to stay, uh, you know, ahead of this and be, you know, to your point, useful um, in, in what I believe we heard, at least my ears heard, from council mm -hmm. during our last meeting. So thank you for raising that. Mm -hmm. And um, no, it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process thing that um, it's been difficult to manage during our limited time together once a month. We try to do a lot because there's a lot to uh, uh, do, much, just the creation of this document, plus the things we have interest in and <coughs> like to bring to the table or things that may get raised you know, to our attention. So I don't know what good that was, but no, <laughs> thank I you for listening, that. everybody. Just, you know. Because I think if we were able to kind of break some of break it down, then we would have, we would be able to focus on how our expectations for council and what they should expect from us. And then the community, what they should expect from us as well. And so right now we're trying to give it all into this one document, but really council, I, be I believe, wanted to know what expectations you have of council and what do you need from council in order to effectuate your goals um, and then also what we would need to effectuate the goals when it comes to the community because although they're the same because of the rules and technical parts of it it isn't um, so of course we want to be on notice when there's going to be certain decisions being made or when we don't know when they're gonna we do know when they're gonna vote but not, but not necessarily you know we're not we're we're not being invited to the table and for example there's gonna be a, a joint uh, city council meeting on the school board right correct yep and it's coming up on Thursday right? yep October 27th so kind of I think it is stuff like that 
if we could know what they're going to talk about, maybe in advance, maybe our committee could weigh in. That is, in my opinion, absolutely what we should be weighing in on. Right. And the fact that there is not even, what role do we have besides coming as a community member and sitting and listening? We don't actually get to weigh in and be heard and kind of be a part of the process, which I understand based on how it's set up, that is fine. But after the fact is less effective than it would prior to and so what i would hate to see this committee this committee become is what many have come become and that is proven to not be useful simply because we're not being utilized and if we want to be utilized we need to go to council and tell them what we need and what is required in order for us to be an asset to them because they need to look at us as an asset not just as a and I apologize because I say this often, please don't put the hashtag before DEI and make it a viral thing. Like, no, focus. It is exact, it is more than just what is the thing to do now. And we need to have a seat at that table and we need to be heard because if we're representing our community, which we can all agree that council does and does not, why are we not having input when it comes to that? Especially when it, education is absolutely it's every aspect of the community, actually, but what we know is very important right now is well, education. What she's saying is correct because, like, whatever they're going to discuss, the city council and the school board is very important and it's affecting, obviously, the entire community, right? But I'm not sure whether this falls on our, our liaison, like, to get engaged with us before this. Or no, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm... Like, I'm doing my best to, like, reverse engineer this thing, right? So I'm like, okay, if we did this backwards so that it worked out the way we wanted, I can't articulate what it is I'm hearing we want. So what would have had to happen so that we got what we wanted by Thursday? Like, if we could do this whole thing over again as it relates to school board. So I'm doing my best to understand. So at some point, somebody said city school board should meet it's at that point the liaison would say hey it looks like there's a conversation with city and school board what if what role if any do we play and and then we what and then we would then go to council or whatever that is but like it, we're dancing and it's like an it's an awkward dance like i don't know the we're all like, like no we're, beats. We're, like we're, we're all rhythm. off beat. <laughs> Two different yeah. songs are being played. It's so, a whole so I will say, <laughs> let's let's give each other some grace. We agreed we wanted to dance, right? And and it's awkward right now. It is. And let's let's commit to it won't be the last time, right? But but like, how do we do this going forward? So that's why I appreciate you keep bringing up the li the liaison because honestly, thirty days before the meeting isn't enough. Because then I don't know what we would do in the next two weeks that would, you, you see what I'm saying? Like it, if it didn't just pop up, what is this October? I'm making this up. If there is an idea in July, you know, this will be coming up in November. We should have been talking about this in like August. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Unless it just happened. So anyway, just, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear what everyone is saying and um, I agree that um, we should definitely be involved in that conversation. I know that um, the school district is trying or in the process of creating <coughs> their own DEI parent advisory group. And I, I know that there has been conversation around having an education represented, you know, someone repre representing, um, you know, um, OASD either on our committee or someone that would act as a liaison between our committee and um, this, the school board. I don't, I have not followed up and I don't know what is going on with that, but I know there is conversation. Um, when you talk about the awkward dancing, I think it is because um, the school district is like a different yep. entity and, you know, so I think it, 
ultimately comes back to communication. <laughs> and um, so I, I think a good how question is how do we better communicate between the different entities? Um, and, you know, something that I wonder is if like a flow chart of some sort would, um, I mean, they would not solve any, everything, but a flow chart. Give us a for map. Council, <laughs> yeah, like, does, you know, like, does this agenda item intersect with these topics? Yes, then, okay, go to the DEI um, advisory committee or, you know, just, I don't know, something. Um, but I think what I hear you saying, Lakeisha, is, um, you know, in regards to what the council is asking of us and um, what they made clear at our last meeting, um, I think as far as like the necessary resources that we need, we can include that as part of the plan and that is part of um, section four of identified necessary resources. I know that you don't, you all don't have it, but um, I think that we can list out some of those necessary resources and I know we're not in that section, but I will definitely like jot down that like, you know, we need to improve the communication um, between our groups and um, find out information well ahead of time <laughs> so it's not a burden to try to, you know, like, okay, oh, gosh, it's Thursday. You know, now I need to find child care and figure that out. But um, so, and actually communication is part of Section 4 as well, but I think that that goes more in line with um, the communication between our committee and the general public, but um, I, I hear over and over that the communication is lacking, <laughs> and um, that takes the level of. I guess maybe I just maybe you could help uh, chairperson direct me back to where we are in the agenda because I know we kind of wrapped up section one and. You know, I think I've probably contributed to this as well. We began some just more general discussion. Um, but some of what we're talking about is, to me, it fits our outstanding items. We are talking about perhaps future items on the council agenda, you know, some updates, which I'm hearing community events could be these upcoming school boards. But, I, I, yeah, so remember, I'm just like to understand where we are on here so I can Thank just you. know where to speak Thank to that. next. Mm -hmm. um, I, no, I... I think we were still technically in plan facilitation and development. So. Okay. But I think we're wrapped up with that section okay. at this point. Um, and so we can move on to committee member roundtable um, DEI related activities and events in the area. I know the Oshkosh Pub Public Museum is doing a Dia de los Muertos celebration on Saturday. Um, they'll have various event or activities, um, family friendly. Um, they'll be they have ballet folklorica, I believe, performing. Um, you can check out their information on their Facebook page, on their website, and there's um, flyers and posters around town as well. And then also acknowledging that November is Indigenous Peoples Month. Um, so, yeah, I'm just putting those two things out there right now. Again, I'll offer a remind it's uh, Disability Employment Awareness Month. Um, it is also uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I am always mindful of elections and how we should double down on community. <laughs> These times really concern me so I think anything we do thank you <laughs> early voting starts tomorrow <laughs> the city of Oshkosh at City Hall Will you say that louder? <laughs> yes early voting um, begins tomorrow for the city of Oshkosh and the voting location is City Hall thank you any other um, activities events DEI related Anyone would like to share? Um, I know that Juliana um, mentioned that she would like to have a part in um, sharing some of the campus activities that go on. And so she receives, e as a student, she receives emails. And so hopefully we can start incorporating those into our meeting as well. Okay. 
Um, moving on, outstanding items. So update on Chief Oshkosh statue. I know it's going to be a surprise, but we're still waiting on the proofs. Um, but as soon as they do arrive, they will be sent to the Menominee for one last look um, so that they can uh, finish up this project. Okay. Um, update on community event for Oshkosh Harvest Moon Festival. Um, I um, spoke with someone or um, a nonprofit organization out in Madison um, the, called the Community for um, oh, some something stewardship I'm sorry I'm not recalling the name but as a possible fiscal sponsor for our event so that's the only update I have and then review future items on council agenda oh we did already mention one of them again there is a joint meeting of the Oshkosh school district Oshkosh area school district and this and the city council on Thursday of this week um, at the district administration office and we do have a follow-up budget workshop on November 2nd um, I think last time I had told you we had uh, upcoming workshops earlier this month also um, this isn't on the council agenda necessarily but I believe that Mark Roloff has now included you in his newsletter distribution which that's also um, an area of things that might be coming up that um, so if you glean anything from that that you want to make sure that we talk about at our meetings <coughs> again please just send that over to me um, normally we Angie and I meet and Saida our vice chair when she's available and we go through the agenda about a week and a half before the meeting um, so if you have any agenda items that you want please send them over to me um, and then you know obviously Angie and I discuss that agenda I make last minute tweaks as necessary but uh, we uh, we do spend um, what an hour together usually going through and preparing for this meeting so Michelle can you speak to um, just give us a quick summary on how the budget workshop went for the, when you proposed the um, DEI coordinator at this last last week's budget workshops sure uh, there was a lot of interest I felt in the DEI coordinator enhancement request there were several requests for enhancements made by all all of the different city departments as well as a request for a sustainability um, coordinator um, from the sustainability group and of course the DEI coordinator from our group um, at this time obviously no decisions have been made um, but if anyone does want to go and watch the end of the second day of budgets um, kind of a review of the enhancements happened I would say in the last <coughs> hour of the meeting starting at about 3 30 ish um, so and again a lot of positive um, comments about the DEI coordinator as a potential added position and then um, update on city DEI metrics is our next agenda item yep so I am happy to report that the DEI metrics are up and running on the web page under the city strategic plan there is a specific um, you you'll see a bunch of departments listed and then at the bottom it's the diversity equity and inclusion uh, metrics that are up and running now for anyone in the city to see so take a look at that some of the things that obviously you were all involved with um, regarding putting those metrics together you can actually see how some of the data is coming out now so um, obviously some of them are still working uh, on their data including some that are annual measurements that we may not have uh, any 2022 data yet where is that information again it is under the strategic plan on the website and then if you scroll to the bottom of the strategic plan there's individual departments the last one bottom middle diversity equity and inclusion and those are all um, 
again, kind of live graphs, we'll call them, where you can hover over it and see uh, information as well. You provided it at some point via email, correct? I did not provide that via email yet, the link to the website, as um, it has literally just been um, being, I think, up live the last few days. Okay. So. I saw it. I don't okay. know where. Well, maybe you did. Maybe you did, yes. <laughs> but, yeah. It could very well be that you came across it, but I did not yeah. yet send the okay. link out. Um, but I can also send that out when I send a bunch of stuff from Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, that's wonderful. So you can take a look at what that's looking like. Maybe a something we want to talk about next month is, you know, are there any ahas from those metrics um, that you want to discuss? Okay. Um, lastly, future agenda items. So this is where you guys recommend future agenda <laughs> items. <laughs> I feel like we should get the ones on the agenda off the list before we add some more. <laughs> um, right. Kind right. of circling back to um, the question of whether we want to try to tackle the rest of this, this plan by our next meeting or um, just kind of look at section two and three and Lakeisha when I when you made your comments and statements it made me kind of question again like do we need a sec you know this section two and section three or do we just kind of you know have the action plan after the introduction this question in mind but maybe I'll let I'm, you all yeah. take a look at it and then we can decide Right, maybe that's right. a point where we can talk about that um, and hopefully reach some sort of consensus at the next meeting regarding, even if we don't figure out exact verbiage of every section, what sections do we think need to stay? Um, and then trying to get that over that last um, final um, form maybe for the December meeting or is that too assertive Aren't you gonna weigh in on the ability to accomplish some I be, I interrupted I think no, no, like, no. before we go there let no. me give a long-winded <laughs> statement no, I'm, I'm a time and distance guy so you 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 lose I'm gonna be conservative two weeks in November there there's the Thanksgiving week and then people are hunting before that. I mean, not that, I don't know if anyone in here hunts, but I'm like, you lose some time out of love and respect. I won't touch this that week. So I was just saying like, is it is that real realistic? There's a lot that can be done, but I would rather not overshoot the target. Yeah. And I'll let you know that section two and three are blank as far as like what's on the strategic plan so it would have to be all composed. so again i wonder if that's an area that we just omit for this round of submission um to simplify and mm -hmm. but um we have we the idea of communication and what that looks like when it comes when we're communication with the, with council um understanding that that has been difficult at least for me i'll only speak for myself yeah. but understanding that communication with council is obviously something that we would like to see improved how does that improve and our relationship I will say, I, I do believe the meeting last month did help in just raising awareness of, is this something that we should be consulting DEI with? I think it is, I hope, um, based on the feedback I heard from the council members, much more top of mind now. So I think that is a great um, result in itself.
I don't necessarily think that the December deadline is too far off if we are going to be excluding sections two and three. Because I, I do think that it's important because realistically we could go over this for months. You know, we only meet once a month, so we could go over this for months and go over it. And they, But I do think it's important for us to get this out so that then we can begin doing what we set out to do. Um, so I, I don't think a December deadline is that far off. While November is going to be fairly busy and going up to our next meeting, we may not be able to get everything done. I think by December we could get at least at least a rough copy and maybe get it out in January. All right. Um, if there are no future agenda items, then. I will I will plan on plan development time for um, the entire plan for the next meeting, especially if we're not going to spend much time or, or determine for certain we're not going to do sections two and three. I think that's feasible for us to at least discuss and review it. I think maybe one of our next tasks so is um, going through the goals that are listed and determining which ones we want included because some of these goals have, you know, like goal one, has seven indicators, um, and that's just on, you know, outreach and engagement. So there's probably like 50 indicators listed. So perhaps maybe our next meeting we go through and and you know now reviewing it. Some of these are more like internal um, indicators, and so we might you know just spend some of our meeting ruling out. Um, some well, now you've just intimidated the heck out of me. You know, I, don't, I don't remember all that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I think that is, that'll be a great exercise. How do we simplify? Because that was one of our charges. We don't need that level of clarity and depth. We just, the council really wants a plan. Like, how do we plan to carry out our proposed actions? Sort of was like a little higher level. So that'll be fun. Look forward to it. All right, well, um, I think we are ready for a motion to adjourn our meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? All right. Thank you, everybody. Aye.